Alright guys, welcome to this tutorial on Windows Resource Monitor. So, Windows Resource Monitor is a very cool utility. It's built into your Windows operating system. You don't have to install any third-party applications to be able to access it. And what it can do is really very robust. Now, if you guys out there have been using this for a while, and you might also be aware about other utilities like Process Explorer. Obviously, they are much more awesome than this built-in windows resource monitor but i must say that i have used windows resource monitor personally at my work for quite a time now it's been almost a year and i find it quite helpful most of the times so there are there are very less times when i have to go into more complexity of process explorer although that is more robust and has much more bigger and um, more covering features but my work just gets done with resource monitor most of the time so let's have a look at this application once now in order to launch resource monitor um, you go to uh, on your okay all right so you go to your taskbar right click and say start task manager now over here in performance tab you have this option of resource monitor so this is what uh, the resource monitor utility looks like okay let me just enlarge it a bit all right now overview so under the overview tab um, you have all these options which shows all the list of current processes that are currently running on your system um, the disk activity that is currently happening on your system what processes are using what part of the disk the input outputs that they are making the reads and writes that they are doing to the disk and so on so if you ever feel that your hard disk feels quite slow, this is where you can come up and see what processes are using most part of your hard disk. The same goes for network activity, what processes are using how much of your network bandwidth or even in general network if you are copying large data or if you are on a network where you regularly require using um, maybe your local network to copy large files from one system to other and so on. And then the memory module. So if your RAM is being quite used up, so over here if I see my memory is being used, I have 4 gigs of RAM and currently it's using 2.14 gigs of RAM. And I know so which applications are using how much RAM. So I'm using Cam Recorder, it's using 151 and something, and Chrome is 270 and something. This is kilobytes. So this is how I have the breakup and this is the overview tab where I have all the information I want in front of me right it's like more like a dashboard now um, right now the monitoring is running so the monitoring is active on my system if I want to stop this I can go to monitor and say stop monitoring so this will stop monitoring the processes from now on whatever was monitored till now is here in front of you and if you again want to start monitoring just obviously go to monitor and say start monitoring and this will again start monitoring all the processes uh, auto fit columns so all the columns are auto fit if you just click this and if I uncheck this and so right now they are auto fit but if I uh, close and open this it they might not be auto fit so if you don't want to go on one by one auto fitting all the columns you have it here monitor auto fit columns in window and they will be auto fit so that you can view all the text clearly now obviously for such applications where there is too much text involved there will be some places where um, some text will be wrapped up it will be uh, sort of shortened as you can see over here under the file column and that's quite obvious I mean if you go on trying to view this this is gonna use a large part of your screen almost your entire screen in just one column and that's not what we want okay so that was about overview tab it has all types of, of all types of activity listed at one place now let's go at CPU oh I'm sorry this is my phone ringing let me just silent it all right now if you go on the CPU tab over here you have all the current running processes and their average CPU usage, the number of threads that are active for each and every process and the uh, level of CPU that they are using. Under the services uh, option, it shows 
the list of currently active services that are running on your machine so these services I mean you can obviously go to something like services.msc and see all the services that are configured on your system you can um, configure them with uh, which ones are started which ones are set to start automatically and uh, the ones that are not running over here so if it doesn't show started that means that these services are not running so obviously these services that are running right now are coming from that same list which I just showed you we just ran window key and R and in the run menu we just type services.msa okay so um, now each and every tab will obviously show you the listed graphs like this this graph for each and every tab has three different views which is large medium and small if you want to medium them shorten them a bit small even smaller I keep it large myself because that's quite helpful to me um, apart from this uh, you can obviously select a particular process so if I want to select a particular process I can select it like this now it will show me services that are related to that particular process I don't have any services related to that particular process that's why nothing is appearing over here um, also whenever I select a particular process all the associated handles the DLLs and all that and the associated modules the files um, that are lo uh, linked to that particular process are also uh, shown up in this particular list so say for example I want to see um, cam recorder if I just select this it will show me all the associated handles with camrecorder.exe you can see it over here the files and the directories and the registry keys and so on you can also see the associated modules for this particular process camrecorder.exe so over here all these modules that are currently linked the DLL files are appearing the versions for each and every module is again shown over here so you can obviously select a particular process and see all the associated handles and the associated modules with that particular process not only that whenever you select one particular process it turns into orange and that particular orange line appears in graphs over here as you can see over here if I make them even make more bigger okay so as you can see over here now camrecorder.exe is consistently using this much of CPU the green is the rest of the processes the orange is what camrecorder.exe is using if I change this to say something like chrome or okay now we are seeing it for chrome.exe all the associated handles and the associated modules now chrome is virtually using no cpu at the moment so that's why there's nothing appearing over here it's zero if you want to see for something else um, system is one thing that is using the cpu so you can see over here a small um, bottomed out orange line that is indicating the cpu usage for just system process and all the associated modules with the system process these are mainly the drivers and all the config files that you have configured on your system so that's pretty much it about the CPU tab under the memory tab um, now notice one more thing whenever you select a particular process under one tab it is automatically selected under under other tabs as well so if I selected system under CPU tab this process appears selected under memory tab under disk tab as well as under network activity tab so say for example you want to only monitor a particular process just select that process under any of the one tabs and if that process appears on the other tabs it will be always selected there so you don't have to worry about selecting them or remembering the processes that you selected under one tab and having to manually reselect them under different tabs as well that is something that it takes care of automatically okay so let me uncheck system and let me check chrome okay so chrome um, now I have selected chrome process under CPU tab it's using 0.35% of my CPU at the moment you can see small spikes over here now under memory tab it is using this much amount of memory um, it is showing a complete breakup of different types of memory that it is using right now so again um, if this was a substantial amount of memory it would have appeared over here as well um, this process is always linked to the process ID which is PID so if you want to um, kill this particular process or the entire process tree you can always right click on it 
and go to end process tree and you can even suspend the process if you want to or and then you can resume it at a later time so if I want to suspend the process I just click on suspend the process once I have suspended the process if it is resumable under the right click menu it will highlight uh, it will ungray off the resume process link then I can click on resume process to resume this particular process so that was about um, memory tab now let's look at disk tab so notice that I have selected Chrome because Chrome is not making any disk related activities like reading or writing to the disk it is not appearing over here at all so although it shows that one process is selected but because that that process is not here in this particular list it doesn't appear selected in the first place so let me select system just for the sake of it now you can see most of the uh, disk read and write activity is being done by the system and hence over here the orange lines are completely matching the green spikes and troughs that is the reason why this is happening so if I select the other system process where it is not taking much of the system resources okay because it's substantially low it's not even appearing on the graph let me select say chrome again that is substantially low so you get the point what I'm trying to say over here is that if you are making um, any particular selections on the process it reflects under the disk activity under the memory under the CPU and under the network tab which, is, which we are just about to have a look at um, it also reflects on the graphs it turns into orange so that you can compare the activity for that particular process with the rest of the system and um, under the network tab you actually have a much uh, bigger thing that you might want to check so under the network tab it not only shows you um, everything that has to do with the network activity it also shows you the live connections that are currently going on so my Avast uh, antivirus is currently making connection to this particular address maybe because it is trying to check any definition updates or any program updates consistently in the background so that again shows me that something is using consistently um, my resources in the background my network bandwidth in the background so if I want to terminate this particular process I can do it um, just by right clicking this particular process over here and say end process tree the same goes with Chrome um, there, there are times when you have multiple tabs open on Chrome or Firefox or Internet Explorer or whatever the browsers you are using and if you want to see um, what particular uh, websites are they currently talking to or are they currently liaising with you can see that from here so these are the IP addresses of those websites now these look like more like uh, Google websites so this could be the background update check and so on or I have Gmail and Google Drive open it could be that as well uh, interestingly you can also see the local connection so currently I am using uh, ASUS router at my home and SVC host has made a connection to router.asus.com to ensure my connectivity my LAN cable connectivity that I have with this particular router um, it is I think this one is the loopback because first PC is the host name for my current machine that I'm using and so on so obviously this is the vast amount of information you can have and this is quite useful um, especially when you are working in that domain that uh, that requires you to monitor the resources that are currently active and running on your system um, now let's have a look at TCP connections uh, list under TCP connections it not only shows you the address through which the connection is going on it also shows you um, the connection on each and every instance of that particular process where is it making connection to and what IP address is making connection to what so 192.168.1.253 is my local address the local address of my system that I'm currently using and remote address is the one on which this particular instance of Chrome is making connection to and this is the port number that they're using so if I wanted to check what is this particular thing I can simply go on something like IP trace and trace this particular IP and see what it is that Chrome is making connection with Um, so I have the port number and the remote port number you know what let's actually go ahead and see it on maybe Firefox I said 74.125 seems more like um, Google IP let's still have a look at it I'm just going to do IP trace so let me go to IP tracker.org whichever comes first 
Now you can see because I have opened Firefox, there are so many listed processes of Firefox and Firefox is making connections to so many IP addresses consistently on port 80 and port 443 and so on. So we were on which particular process? Okay, let's grab this one, 74.125.68.189. Okay, so I'm going to do 74.125.68.189. And let's say track trace IP with IP tracer. And you can see this belongs to Google. ISP is Google. It's located in Mountain View, California. And that's pretty much it. So Chrome is making its background connections with its own server, Google, maybe to check the updates, maybe to sync because I'm signed into Chrome using my Google uh, Gmail ID and so on. So that was it about this particular uh, video. So just to once again make uh, show you that one thing that which particular process is using how much resources so I just selected Firefox because that's doing most of the network activity right now and you can see the um, orange lines appearing over here the TCB connections and the entire network activity so also the reading is from 0 till 100 kbps so if you have large network usage say that goes into MBP or something that will be 0 to whatever is the max that your system is using at this particular given moment. Now again, so as I said, you have much more in-depth coverage of all these things, all these features in a third-party utility. Okay, not third-party. It's now owned by Microsoft anyways, which is called Process Explorer. It comes in Sys internal suite. But Resource Monitor, the built-in utility is not much um, useless either. It is helpful and it has helped me quite a lot. I showed you how. So if you ever want to go ahead and use resource monitor, feel free to have a look at this video, a small tutorial and then go ahead and use it. Um, so that was pretty much it from my end guys for this particular video. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much. Do like and share this video if you like it. Um, let me know your comments and suggestions and recommendations in the comments below. If you have anything to share with me or if you want anything, any particular sort of video, to any particular topic to cover me uh, to cover me on I can I'll try and do that from my end and don't forget to subscribe and like this particular video don't forget to subscribe my channel thanks a lot for watching this and do stay tuned for more